One Punch Man Season 2, the show that got hated on for its animation quality even before the current era where everybody pretends to be an expert on that subject. People were really disappointed with this show's visual quality. Now, of course, most of this negative reception was caused due to the ridiculously high quality that Season 1 had. One Punch Man Season 1 is one of the best looking TV anime of all time. You'd be hard pressed to find anything that looks as good. It set the bar way too high. But every Everybody and their grandmother loves talking about how good season 1 looked. There's very little appreciation for season 2. Over the years, people have settled down. Most people have realized that season 2 doesn't look bad. According to the current widely accepted opinion, One Punch Man season 2 looks average, with a couple of standout cuts here and there. Well, what if I told you that's incorrect? What if I told you One Punch Man season 2 actually looked very good? In fact, what if I told you One Punch Man season 2 is one of the better looking modern action shows out there. Well, I just did. One Punch Man Season 2 looked very good. Of course, it's nowhere near Season 1 in terms of visual quality, but then again, very few things are. Let's talk about this season. Make sure you subscribe. Do it. Do it now. Come on, I'm waiting. Now yes, this season wasn't perfect. In fact, let's start with the negatives. The way this show, or more specifically, the compositing department handled the metal textures is questionable. Genos's arms being the primary victim of this approach. I'm sure most of you are aware of this already, but I'll reiterate because why not? The arms are not 3D. They are hand-drawn with a lot of compositing effects piled on top of them. This is the look they went for and it's not good, in my opinion. Anything metallic looks bad. The texture is way too overpowering and busy. It's unappealing. The show all also had a fair bit of motion blur abuse. Another flaw is the ghosting, although the animation team has nothing to do with that. Ghosting is that echo effect that animation occasionally has. In this case, it was probably there to prevent seizures and other medical situations, the same reason why shows undergo dimming during certain scenes. This effect was removed in the Blu-ray version, and a side-by-side -side of the two really shows the difference. Another issue that this show had is the inconsistent character designs. Not necessarily bad drawings, although you can find quite a few of those. I'm talking about the same character looking like a different person depending on the scene. Although that isn't surprising, this show had an awful schedule. One which wouldn't allow animation directors and chief animation directors to work their magic and bring about a sense of visual cohesion. Although it could have been a lot worse, but thankfully the team at JC staff decided to handle as much of the key animation in-house as possible. Some of the layouts did get butchered, mostly because these cuts were way too complicated for the cleanup team. A similar thing happened to Vincent's layout for My Hero Academia Season 5. When an LO is too complicated for the second key animators, the animation director often partially or fully redraws the scene, making it simpler. One Punch Man Season 2 had quite a bit of that, which just about sums up the flaws. And no, the lack of constant Sakuga isn't a flaw for f**k's sake. If that's what you expect from an anime, your understanding of the medium is heavily flawed. Let's talk about the positives, and trust me, there's a lot of those. We can't praise season 2 without mentioning key animator Kenichiro Aoki. Aoki animated 20 high quality sequences for this season. Not 20 cuts, 20 sequences. Of course, Aoki didn't solo animate the entire project, we cannot ignore names like Yuji Takagi, Yuki Suzuki and Ryan White, amongst others. But Aoki was easily the most important animator. If you take the 30 best looking scenes from this show, at least 27 of those will be animated by Aoki. He has worked on every single episode. The sheer volume of work he did and the quality of the same is absolutely insane. The first few episodes were not too action heavy, and as you'd expect, Aoki animated most of the best looking scenes. One of his biggest strengths is his timing, which allows for the perfect build up and release effect. Even in a relatively simple cut like this one, you can feel the weight every time Genos completes a rotation. There's a long build up followed by a quick release followed by the next long build up. Even the wind is incredibly well timed here. Of course, timing isn't the only thing Aoki is good at. His effects look really good and his way of drawing and integrating smears is incredible. His sequence in episode 2 had this really impressive slow motion shot with phenomenal timing. The episode also had this neat little cut featuring Garo and this split second cut of an explosion which looks really good. Also, while I do dislike the metal textures, this scene with the orange-red glow on the same does look amazing. Again, these episodes do have some 
limited moments, it's not too jarring because it adds to the goofy nature of it all. Although the bird scene did lack any real impact. The third episode features one of the best looking non-Aoki cuts in the entire show. Animated by Yuji Takagi, it starts off with some really strong drawings and incredible shading, followed by this heavily smeared punch which looks amazing. Also love the multicolored impact frames. The scene also has some solid background animation and some really well animated effects and debris. Aoki's sequence starts off with this incredible set of slow motion cuts with top tier perspective work on the fist. There's more of that incredible build up and release effect. Aoki holds on to the pre-punch pose for several frames before the impact. There's a short but amazing cut of background animation followed by another amazing example of this build up and release effect. The rest of the episode had some alright looking action. The fourth episode contains one of my all-time favorite uses of CGI. The 3D model for the centipede thing looks really good. It has a large amount of line work and it is heavily smeared which allows it to blend in. Besides the solid Kenichiro Aoki sequence, a short Yuji Takagi cut and some decent effects, this episode is quite limited. But the amazing 3D helps make up for the lack of all-around movement. Episode 5 disappointed a lot of people and, to be honest, I get it. The entire fight between Garo and Metal Bat was extremely limited. Even Aoki's work was only 4 seconds long and not too terribly impressive. The fight was disappointing. Episode 6 was supposed to be a limited episode but as always, Kenichiro Aoki decided to go all out. Although yes, the fight between Genos and the Roach guy is kneecapped by the compositing. The metal textures look bad. The most impressive thing about this fight is the smear work and the timing. The smears on Genos' arms and the trail effect on the fire looks absolutely incredible. Episode 7 featured some decent Yuki Suzuki cuts but again Kenichiro Aoki snapped. The timing is a bit wonky throughout the sequence but the actual animation is really good. Saitama's face goes from well drawn to this goofy look with thick outlines. The rest of the fight is very limited but it's well disguised and it adds to the comedic nature in my opinion. Episode 8 is very interesting because it featured a lot of freelancers. Names like Daniel Barron, Yen BM, Ryan White, Rio and more. And it's the perfect example of poor schedules ruining everything. This scene was animated by Chris or Yen BM and this is what he is capable of animating. This scene was animated by Rio and this is what he or she is capable of animating. This scene was animated by Daniel Barron and this is what he is capable of animating, you get my point. A lot of the key animation was outsourced to Studio LAN which is why so many new names showed up. The action in this episode was ambitious but it had a lot of rough edges. Incorrect timing, choppy movement, poor cleanup and second key animation, this episode had all of the classic problems that come with a bad schedule. But still, this episode did look solid. Highlights include this amazing bit of character acting animated by Julian Bentley, Yen's sequence although his layout did get butchered, also loved seeing those newer webgen techniques such as this cut with lots of kutsuna lightning. Of course Kenichiro Aoki was on fire. The heavy amount of detail and line work on the characters is really impressive. Episode 9 was extremely limited but as always there's that one Kenichiro Aoki sequence. It featured some amazing energetic movement with top notch smears. Episode 10 contains my favorite sequence from this season. Animated by Kenichiro Aoki to absolutely no one's surprise, the thick outlines, the amazing shading, the snappy and impactful timing, the top tier background animation, the effects, the smears, this sequence had it all. You can take this scene in its entirety and insert it into any episode from season 1 and nobody would notice. It's that good. The episode also contains a decent sequence animated by Yuki Suzuki and another well-timed cut animated by Aoki. Also, the rotation shot is impressive because of how detailed Garo's design is. Episode 11 contains some amazing action animation, most of which is animated by Aoki, but he's not the only one. Ryan White and Zucchini Juice handled this sequence, although some amount of layout butchering happened here. This fight is really well storyboarded. Every piece of action flows into the next one quite well. It doesn't feel like two characters are fighting and the rest are standing around doing nothing. A huge chunk of the Garo Genos fight was animated by Aoki, including Garo being blown away and Genos blasting himself up. This brings us to the final final episode. Garo getting beaten up is mostly animated by Yuji Takagi and Kenichiro Aoki. Aoki's sequence in particular feels visceral. Each hit has so much weight. Also his debris animation looks insanely good. Even something as simple as the bird grabbing onto Garo feels heavy. Also love this cut, reminds me of season 1. The 3D model for the centipede looks decent. There's this solid sequence animated by the freelance gang. Of course Aoki isn't done yet. He animated this amazing sequence where he actually drew part of 
of the monster. Also love this tracking shot. As the final fight comes to a close, the whole vibe changes. For a few seconds, we are transported back to season 1. That's because this scene was animated by Yoshimichi Kameda, one of the main animators from season 1. The three-tone shading on Saitama's face, the heavily detailed arm, the incredible fabric animation and that classic Kanada style explosion. It looked amazing. One Punch Man Season 2 Looked good. If you expected it to look as good as Season 1, you expected too much. Season 1 featured nearly every major name in the industry. Yutaka Nakamura, Arifumi Imai, Yoshimichi Kameda, Norifumi Kugai, Keichiro Watanabe, Toshiyuki Sato, Kai Ikarashi, and many, many more. It's not a fair comparison. Despite the obvious flaws, Season 2 managed to pull through. Nearly every episode had a few impressive cuts. The highlights from the season were phenomenal, and the overall consistency was… well, not bad. It was a good looking season, that's about it. Is Trigon Stampede good looking? Yes, yes it is. Find out why by clicking the video on screen. Like and subscribe, and until next time.